What is up everyone? My name is Joseph and welcome to Casually Competitive MTG, where it's our goal to bring you semi-competitive EDH gameplay content that is both fast-paced and entertaining. In this pod, we took some decks that we have found more recently to be enjoyable, as well as some decks that are new to the channel. So today's pod consists of Blood Pod, Momir Vig Hackball, Sadisi Brew Tyrant, and Cranko Mob Boss. Now, if you want to vote for your favorite commander to see them in the fan favorites, there'll be a Twitter poll link in the description since we can no longer use YouTube polls. So check that out if you want to vote for your personal favorite and have a say in which decks will make it to the fan favorites. Before we get into the opening hands and deck introductions, I have a few quick channel promotions. First, if you do want to help support the channel financially, we have a Patreon available. We do really appreciate everyone who does support us in this way. It honestly goes so far to help us maintain the content and we really couldn't do it without you guys. Next, if you want to rep some casually competitive merch, be sure to head on over to our website casuallycompetitivemtg.com where we have a decent amount of merch items available. Next, if you're going to be buying cards in the near future, we have a TCG affiliate link in the description. After clicking on that link, any purchase you make will directly help the channel at no cost to you. And finally, we are now partnered with Flipside Gaming, so if you use our code CASUALLYMTG at checkout on Flipside Gaming on eligible purchases of $10 or more, you will receive a 10% discount. Also, for the month of July, we are partnering with them to do a double Masters Box giveaway, so click on the link in the description for more details on that. Now, without any further ado, let's get into the opening hands and deck introductions. Going first today is Joseph playing the partner commanders Timna the Weaver and Tana the Bloodsower. This deck, known as Blood Pod, looks to slow and stacks out the board while attempting to constantly have a life total threat with creatures and swingers on the board, all while looking for a Kiki Jiki based combo, so either Kiki Jiki and Felidar Guardian or Splinter Twin and Goblin Sharpshooter. Joseph's opening hand contained a Command Tower, an Enlightened Tutor, a Diabolic Intent, an Assassin's Trophy, a Ramunap Excavator, a Felidar Guardian, and a Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. Going second is Jordan playing Momir Vig Simic Visionary. This deck is known as Hackball, and the goal of this deck is to get a hack effect like the Whim of Volrath, for example, in order to make Momir Vig both search up a card and draw that card when you play any blue or green creature. This works by changing the word blue on Momir Vig's text to read green, making any of his green creature cards essentially tutors. He can tutor for any creature by playing a green creature once he has one of those effects in play. This effect not only allows him to get massive value in the mid game, but also chain tutor a series of creatures that allows him to win the game. Jordan's opening hand contained two islands, a Dryad Arbor, a Whim of Volrath, a Swan Song, a Sylvan Library, and a Gilded Drake. Going third is Adam playing Sidisi Brood Tyrant, and this deck is a Hermit Druid based deck with the goal to use Sidisi's mill ability to get cards in his graveyard and get really good value off of some reanimator targets like Chingataxis or Razakath, and eventually win through activating Hermit Druid to mill his entire library, and then with Dread Return, play Thassa's Oracle from his graveyard. Adam's opening hand contained a Wooded Foothills, a Forbidden Orchard, a Nurturing Peatland, a Cephalid Coliseum, an Arbor Elf, a Ransack the Lab, and a Mist Hollow Griffin. And finally, going last today is Nate L playing his mono red Cranko mob boss deck. This deck looks to just play a lot of goblins that get him a lot of value and eventually overrun the board with a Cranko based combo with something like a Mana Echoes and a Staff of Domination, with a backup line including Kiki Jiki or Splinter Twin and Zealous Conscripts. Nate's opening hand contained two snow covered mountains, a Cavern of Souls, a Buried Ruin, a Simeon Spirit Guide, a Dockside Extortionist, and a Lightning Greaves. Now, with the opening hands and deck introductions out of the way, Let's get into the gameplay. Joseph starts off this game by drawing, playing a command tower as his land, and then passing the turn to Jordan. Jordan on his turn plays a Dryad Arbor as his land, and with nothing to do with this summoning sick land, ships the turn to Adam. Adam starts his turn by playing a Wooded Foothills, and he then pays one life to crack it to search up a breeding pool to the battlefield, and he then pays two additional life to have it enter untapped. With the breeding pool, he taps it for a green mana to cast an Arbor Elf. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Nate L. Nate, on his turn, plays a Cavern of Souls as his land for turn, and when it enters the battlefield, he names Goblin. With no other turn one plays to make, he goes to pass the turn to Joseph, and on Nate's end step, Joseph taps his command tower for a white to cast an Enlightened Tutor. In response to the Enlightened Tutor, Adam pays two life to cast a Mental Misstep countering the Enlightened Tutor. With no other responses to Nate's end step, Joseph goes to his turn, untaps, plays a Mystic Confluence as his land for turn, and then gives the turn to Jordan. 
Jordan untaps, plays an island as his land, and then taps for two mana to cast a Sylvan Library. With this card advantage engine on the board, he gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, and then as his land, plays a Watery Grave, paying two life to have it enter untapped, and he then taps his mana to cast a Ransack the Labs. He looks at the top three cards of his library and puts a Polluted Delta and an Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth into the graveyard, keeping one in his hand. He then goes to combat and swings his Arbor off at Jordan, who declares no blockers. Jordan takes the damage, and Adam then gives the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, plays a snow-covered mountain as his land, and then taps both of his lands to cast Lightning Greaves. With nothing left to do, he gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, plays a snow-covered swamp as his land, and then taps for three mana to cast one of his partner commanders, Timna the Weaver. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps and draws two additional cards due to Sylvan Library being on the battlefield, and decides to keep all three cards, taking eight total damage. He then plays an island as his land, and then taps for two mana to cast a Gilded Drake. There are no responses to Gilded Drake, and when it enters the battlefield, he has the ETB target Timna the Weaver on Joseph's battlefield, and he then gains control of Timna, and Joseph gains control of the Gilded Drake. With nothing left, Jordan ships the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, plays a Twilight Mire as his land, and then taps his mana sources to cast his commander, Sidisi Brew Tyrant. It resolves, and when Sidisi enters the battlefield, he mills the top three cards of his library, milling a Drowned Catacombs, a Flooded Grove, and a Grim Flare. Since he did mill a creature, he makes a 2-2 zombie, and he then gives the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, plays a Snow-Covered Mountain as his land, and then exile Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand in order to generate a red mana to help cast his commander, Cranko Mob Boss. With Cranko now on the battlefield, he goes to equip his Lightning Greaves to his commander, and he then taps his hasty Cranko to generate a 1 1 Goblin token. With nothing left, Nate gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps and then immediately goes to combat, swinging the 3 3 Drake at Jordan. Jordan declares no blockers, takes 3 damage, and in then Joseph's second main phase, he taps for 2 mana to cast a Diabolic Intent, sacrificing the Drake as an additional cost. There are no responses, he searches up a card to his hand, and then for 0 mana, he casts a Mana Crypt. He then taps his Mana Crypt along with his Mana Confluence taking 1 damage to cast a Ramunap Excavator. With nothing left, Joseph gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps and draws two additional cards due to Sylvan Library, and decides this time to just keep one of them, taking no damage. He then plays a forest as his land, and he then goes to combat and swings Timna the Weaver at Nate. Nate decides to block with his Goblin token, and when the damage is dealt, Jordan gains two life from the lifelink. Jordan then, in his second main phase, taps his mana to cast a Vizier of the Menagerie. He looks at the top card of his library, and then with nothing left to do, ships the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, plays a Nurtured Peatland as his land, and then goes to combat, swinging his commander at Joseph and the 2-2 zombie at Nate. On attack, Adam mills three cards due to Sidisi's trigger, and he mills a Mogus's Marauder, a Jinkataxis, and a Waterlogged Grove. Since he milled a creature, he creates another 2-2 zombie, and then with Sidisi's trigger resolved, neither Joseph or Nate declare any blockers and each take the damage. Adam then goes to his second main phase, and then for 3 mana, casts a Toxic Deluge, paying 4 life into the spell. The Deluge resolves and clears the board of all creatures. He then pays 1 life to generate a green mana with his Nurturing Peatland in order to cast an Elvish Mystic. With nothing left, Adam gives the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, plays a snow-covered mountain as his land, and then taps for 3 mana to cast a Goblin Chieftain. With his board cleared and no attacks to make, he passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps and, in his upkeep, loses his Mana Crypt trigger, taking 3 damage. He then plays a Verdant Catacombs as his land, and then taps his mana to cast a Felidar Guardian. There are no responses to this combo piece, and when it enters the battlefield, he has it blink his Mana Crypt. He then takes 1 damage in order to cast Green Sun Zenith, X equaling 2. It resolves, and he searches up a Destiny Spinner to the battlefield, and he then shuffles Green Suns back into his library. He then pays 1 life to crack his Verdant Catacombs to shock in a Stomping Grounds. He then for 1 green mana, casts an Elves of Deep Shadow. And with his rebuild now established, he gives a turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps and draws 2 additional cards due to the Sylvan Library, this time deciding he needs as many cards as possible, and takes 8 damage to keep all 3. 
He then plays a forest as his land and taps for one green mana to cast a Wirewood Symbiote. With nothing left, Jordan gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws his card for turn, and realizes that he needs to do something in order to deal with Joseph's rebuild, so he plays a Cephalid Coliseum as his land and then pays a blue mana into it to crack it since he does have Threshold. He draws three cards, discards three cards, which were a Hinterland Harbor, a Forbidden Orchard, and a Neoform. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, plays a Buried Ruin as his land, and then taps for two mana to cast a Ruby Medallion. It resolves, and he then taps one mana to cast a Dockside Extortionist. When it enters the battlefield, he generates three treasure tokens, and he then uses some of these treasure tokens to help recast his commander, Cranko Mob Boss. Similar to his last cast, he goes to equip his Lightning Greaves to his commander, and in response to that equip, Jordan taps for a blue mana to cast Chain of Vapor targeting Cranko. In response to Chain of Vapor, Nate taps Cranko since he has haste to generate three goblin tokens, and with nothing left, Cranko gets bounced and Nate decides to not copy the spell. He then goes to combat and swings his three hasty goblin tokens at Adam, who declares no blockers, and Adam then takes six damage. With nothing left to do, he passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps and in his upkeep again loses his mana crypt trigger, taking 3 damage. He then plays a Marsh Flats as his land for turn, and he then taps his mana, taking 1 damage from mana confluence in order to cast Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. Priorities get around, and unfortunately, everyone had used their interaction on previous turns, and Kiki Jiki resolves. Joseph then demonstrates a loop where he taps Kiki Jiki to copy Felidar Guardian, and then when the new hasty token Felidar Guardian enters the battlefield, he decides to blink Kiki Jiki, essentially untapping it, allowing Joseph to create as many hasty Felidar Guardian tokens as he wants, and he then goes to combat and swings 10,000 at each of his opponents, dealing enough damage to finish them off and win the game. Now before this video comes to a close, let's have some post-game discussion about this game, and specifically I want to talk about turn order. Now it's not really super obvious on why turn order was incredibly important here, but one thing I want to note is that Nate's Cranko deck does actually do fairly well in this higher powered tier. It really sneaks out a lot of wins, and the biggest reason is it's just easy to ignore. It's not a deck that constantly threatens wins, but it is a deck that seems to be stopped easily, and if it's not stopped easily, it will grind out that win from just being ignored. We've seen this deck been played many times, even on the channel, do that very thing. And because of that, people in our playgroup tend to try to deal with Cranko before he has something like Hexproof or some type of protection. So Nate going right before me, I was playing the Blood Pod deck, made it so that when he played his turn five threat, People use their interaction on it because once Cranko has that protection, generally if the game isn't over in the next few turns, Cranko will continue to get massive value by just building up a board of what were two twos at that time and constantly threatening life totals. It is also relevant to note that the Toxic Deluge from Adam's deck was gone, so realistically in terms of mass board control, there was really just my Toxic Deluge in Blood Pod and maybe a Cyclonic Rift, which was fairly far away at that point in the game, so Jordan probably felt that it was necessary to try to deal with Cranko while it was feasible to do so without expending too many resources, and unfortunately I just had the right cards that I needed in my hand to win on that next turn before he could untap or go a few cards deeper with Sylvan Library. So being in that turn order position was super helpful for me in order to, to get past some of that interaction and because of that win the game. Turn order is just so important, especially when you're playing a deck that doesn't run much control or anti-counter in these blue list decks. So I just wanted to comment on it because it is important to always remember where you are in turn order and always be aware on how you can capitalize on that. That being said, that is all we have for this episode. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the game. We have some really spicy games coming for you in the next few weeks, and we really think you'll enjoy the ones we have coming up. But that all being said, that is all we have for this video. If you want to catch these games live, head on over to our Twitch channel, and if you want to vote on your favorite commander out of this pod, head on to the Twitter poll link in the description. That all being said, I am Joseph. This was Casually Competitive MTG. We all hope you have a fantastic weekend and the rest of your week. We will see you next time.